some sources aren't as straightforward to cite as books or journal articles. Let's take a look at how to cite some of them using APA. Maybe one of your assigned textbooks this year is a course pack, a custom collection of readings that your professor selected and had printed up and sold at the university bookstore. Course packs are a bit of a gray area when it comes to citations. Most citation styles don't have clear rules on how they should be treated. Depending on the citation style you're using, as well as your professor's preferences, you may just cite a work using the citation information provided to you in the course pack. That is, the information for where the work was originally published when your professor collected it for the course pack. In this case, you wouldn't mention that you found it in a course pack at all, and the citation would just look like a normal citation for a book chapter or journal article, or whatever type of source it may be. Alternatively, works in a course pack can be cited as you would a work in an anthology or a chapter in an edited book. First, you'll start with the author of the piece, followed by the year that the course pack was printed, followed by the title of the work. Next, you'll use the word in, and then list the editor of the course pack, probably your professor. In italics, you'll list the title of the course pack, followed by the page range the work occupies within the course pack. Next, you'll list the city of publication and the publisher, in this case, the University of Victoria Bookstore. Finally, in parentheses, you'll let the reader know where the work was reprinted from. In the case of a journal article, you'll include the name of the journal, the volume and issue, the original page range for the article, and the original year of publication. This may seem like a lot of information, but keep in mind that the intention of your reference list is to enable your reader to track down and find the works you've cited. The first half of the information lets the reader know where you found the article, while the second half allows a reader who doesn't have access to your course pack to find the work for themselves. If you're unsure how your professor wants a work in a course pack cited, you can always ask them. Now, let's take a look at citing a social media post. Maybe you need to cite a tweet made by a business. In text, you would cite the organization's name as the author, and then the year of publication. For your reference list, you would start with the name of the organization, followed by the full date that the post was made. Then, in place of where a title would normally go, you would copy out up to 40 words of the text exactly as it appears, including any spelling errors or punctuation marks used in the post. In square brackets, you would clarify the type of post, in this case, a tweet. Finally, you include the URL where you retrieved the post from. A Facebook or other social media post by an organization will also follow the same pattern. For a tweet by a single author rather than an organization, you'd begin the citation with the author's real last name and first initial, if available, followed by their screen name in square brackets. If their real name isn't available, you take their username out of bracket and use it instead. If you are citing a social media post that your readers wouldn't be able to access, for instance, a Facebook post that can only be viewed by the poster's friends list, you would follow the rules for a personal communication. Personal communications only require an in-text citation. An entry in your reference list isn't necessary because the reader wouldn't be able to track down the post even if they tried. Struggling with a citation that we didn't cover in this video? Check out the citation quick guides on our website. If you still need help, ask us online, or stop by the Research Help Desk in McPherson Library for one-on-one -on -one citation help.